Tonight I am in western Panama and I am looking for snail eating snakes and they are a species that lives up in trees or any tall plant for that matter. So all I have to do is walk along the edge of this grove here and perhaps I will be able to see some. We've got a snake moving through here. This is Sibon nebulatus or the cloudy snail eating snake. If I take this one, okay, well, this one didn't really do it. But sometimes if you take these snakes um, out of branches, uh, they will curl up into balls, kind of like this, but like all of a sudden. Sometimes they'll make a, a false striking pose and they never really actually bite. This one's an adult, by the way. They don't really get much bigger than this. You see it's going over to that um, axle right there where the branch meets the trunk of this banana. That's usually the kind of place they'll sleep during the day. Probably the largest rhinoceros I've seen yet. Definitely not one I want to get bitten by. Uh, and I'm sure, well, and I'm sure this one uh, just flew in because I'm walking back on a trail I just walked. And quite obviously, because this is in the genus Copophora, we do have a female here with this comically large ovipositor. In this vine here, we have a cloudy snail eating snake. And this one is really quite large for the species standards. As soon as I catch it, it should ball up. It's moving, moving along here. These are quite easy to spot. It isn't super easy to find these guys on nights like uh, tonight where there isn't much rain or it's not drizzling. But that being said, it did rain earlier today. And the slugs and snails, which this guy eats, are out. This is where I found the snake. So off it goes. Look at that. An opossum. And this isn't one of your typical Virginia opossums either. This is one of the tropical ones. And usually when I see these here, and this is why I haven't really filmed any, they kind of dash off immediately. But this one's kind of in a trance with my light here. But I'll stop that because it's quite bright and no animal wants that in their eyes for too long. There's a Sibon up there, kind of high up, but it's moving away from the camera, so... I'm gonna see if I can catch it and then I'll start rolling again. The snake is coming down now. In a second here, it'll be quite convenient to catch. Here's our snake that I just took down. This one is probably the most vibrant I've seen. Kind of got these orangish bands instead of just peach. And also kind of dark. Really cool one. And this is the first one I've found that hasn't balled up, if you'll notice. Now it's turning into a ball. Usually they turn into a ball right when you catch them, but then sometimes they just realize that they can't really go anywhere. Um, and then they try this defense technique. Because I think while I was on the ground, I thought it possibly had a chance of getting away, but that is certainly not the case. Although I am going to release this one shortly. There's a big moth that's interrupting my, my video here. See that guy? Thing is really big. Gone now. I think that may have been one of the um, big hawk moths that drink at night. Why don't we just put you on the side of the tree where you were found? I released this just one minute ago and I walked over here and up in the tree, there's another one. This one's in a less conspicuous area. And even though its eyes aren't cloudy, it looks like its scales suggest that it may be going into molt sometime soon. I'm gonna pull this one down really quickly. And this is a snake species that is actually quite tolerant of other um, snail eaters. They, they do fine together and they won't fight or anything. So I can put them together, no issue. Though I don't know much about these snakes, I was expecting some other species to be the most common, certainly not this. This smaller one that I'm holding right here, that one was the one that was in this kind of viney area where the tree is. And this one I'm gonna carry back to its tree. And I think that was, it was, yeah, it was this tree. So just put it there and it'll find its way to where it needs to be. Just walked by this Phanutria, a wandering spider. I think it's a Brazilian wandering spider and it is molting. You can see that the cap of the prosoma has come off. And now that's the part where the entire spider will make its way out of the exoskeleton. And the very last thing to leave the exoskeleton will be the, uh, the tarsi, or the last segments in the feet. I'm not really all that close to the spot where I found the other cloudy snail eaters, but uh, 
What can I say? Here we have yet another one. Um, I can't really complain. They're a really cool snake. And let me just uh, let me just get that really quickly. Oh, this one's really puffing up its head. There you go. That's probably the best example I've gotten thus far. I'm putting you back in the tree where I found you. You can hang out there. As soon as they're like this, they're not going to fall. They're really adapted for an arboreal lifestyle. So it will go back to eating slugs and whatever else it finds. I really expect more of these to be out on, like I said, the, the nights where it's drizzling because that's when the snails are out and whatnot. But uh, in my time here, I've only seen a total of one snail and it was just a shell. So I think they're just eating those pancake slugs mostly. And there are definitely quite a few of those out here. All those Cybin nebulatus out tonight. And this is the only pancake slug I've seen out here. Well, it's the only slug or mollusk in general that I've seen all night. So not really sure which condition prompted them to come out, but they probably know better than I do. Up here, we've got a Cybin nebulatus. And yeah, this one is not currently really looking for food, but it was drinking some water off of the wet leaves here. Let's see if it curls up into a ball. No? I guess not. This one's pretty chill. And the way they actually eat those uh, snails, slugs is pretty straightforward, but the way they eat snails, since they don't want to actually eat the, the shell of the snail, is they'll bite the actual snail itself, like near the head, and then they'll drag the snail around until it gets the shell wedged on some kind of hard surface typically like a trunk or something like that. And then once the shell comes off eventually, then it can eat the uh, snail. This one could have some uh, growing left to do, but I think the males are a little smaller than the females. So it could just be that this one's a male, though I don't really know how to tell them apart. This is, this one's tree. I'm gonna put it on this banana leaf. This little dung beetle stopped moving because I was filming it. They do a pretty good job of playing dead. And this one has quite a few mites as you can see there. But their flaw in playing dead a little too well is they tuck their legs in just a little too neatly and that lets me know that it's alive. And there you go. Now it's crawling around. And this is not a Carolina copris. Some other species um, has a more elongated body. But that being said, it does look quite similar. Oh, there it goes. You see this up here? Up here we have a snake. Um, and as you can tell, I mean, this is a big leaf, but it is quite a small snake. This is actually a cloudy snail eater, like we've been seeing, Cybin nebulatus, but a little baby. This is a hatchling. It's probably not very old at all. Look at this guy. He's teeny tiny. This may be one of this snake's first nights out. Yeah, it's only 15 centimeters or so. Pretty, pretty cute guy. And you can see already as a juvenile, it has kind of the habits of an adult kind of curling around, moving erratically. Here, I'll put it in this plant. This is the plant that um, folds up when you touch it. I think it's folded up right now because it's raining. Look at this Bolito glossa right here. They're not all too common, so I hope I find more like this one. He's missing his tail. I think that will regrow uh, sooner or later. Well. That will be all for this video, so thank you for watching.